Uh, this is Ken Thomas, and the program is off the beaten path, and uh, this is another in our extended look at the Kennedy assassination. Tonight, uh, an interview with Carrie Thornley. Carrie Thornley is the author of a book called The Idle Warriors. The Idle Warriors was written in 1961, uh, two years before the Kennedy assassination, and its main character is Lee Harvey Oswald. Oswald was a Marine chum of Carrie Thornley, uh, who defected to the Soviet Union shortly after their service together, and uh, that inspired Carrie to write a novel. The novel, The Idle Warriors, is available from Illuminate Press uh, at Post Office Box 746, Avondale Estates, Georgia, 30002. Um, <laughs> and now, Carrie Thornley. Carrie, can you tell me then a little bit about the origins of the book and the or your um, acquaintance well, with uh, Oswald? And yeah, I was, uh, I was in the Marines with Oswald at a subsidiary of uh, El Toro Marine Base in California. He had just been overseas. He'd just been to Japan. And uh, I w wound up going overseas uh, and wound up stationed in the same outfit that he'd been in when he was over there. And uh, I'd been there, I arrived in July, and I'm, that autumn I read in the papers that uh, he had uh, gone into the uh, American Embassy in Moscow and plopped down his passport and had attempted to renounce his American citizenship. And uh, that came as a surprise to me because even though he claimed that he was a communist, it was always seemed tongue in cheek to me. It didn't. It was uh, didn't seem to me like he was very serious about it. And uh, so uh, I was. Uh, I got to thinking about it, and I decided. And I was getting disillusioned with the United States myself at the time. The uh, not very long afterwards, that next spring, the U-2 incident occurred, and uh, Dwight David Eisenhower was actually caught lying about something which just seemed inconceivable to me up until then. Mm -hmm. um, Sir, was this 1959, Kerry? Uh, it was uh, 1959 that, uh, that Oswald... Uh, attempted to defect or defected or whatever it is that he actually was doing. Um, and I believe the U-2 incident was probably in May of 1960, if I'm uh -huh. not mistaken. Okay. Um, anyway, um, so as my tour of duty over there uh, continued, I more and more began to feel like I understood why he defected to the Soviet Union, which I didn't. Um, all Everything I've read since then has convinced me that I didn't know what I was talking about, you know, that I was projecting my own feelings and experiences into him. But, uh, so I uh, decided I was going to write a novel about being in the Marines anyway because I would wanted to be a novelist, and being in the Marines was the first exciting thing that ever happened to me. And so I decided to make my main character defect to the Soviet Union in the last chapter. Uh, and uh, when I got back to the States, uh, I, I made a lot of notes for the novel when I was overseas, but none of them ever found their way into the final, the final draft. I started working on it when I got back to California, wrote the first five chapters in California, and then my friend Greg Hill and I went down to New Orleans and lived in the French Quarter, and that's when I wrote the rest of it. And uh, we arrived there in February of 1961. And uh, I spent, uh, I got a part-time job and spent much of that summer work working on the book. And then uh, finally... Uh, wrote the last chapter sometime in, uh, I think it was probably late in 61. And you never heard Lee Oswald's name in New Orleans or knew of people that knew him in New Orleans? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, in New Orleans, you, you never heard Lee Oswald's name again. That's and weird. Can, Carrie, can you hear me? Hello? Can, Carrie, can you yeah, hear me? Did we get cut off? Uh, I'm still here. Can you hear me? Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, I ask you if when you were in New Orleans in uh, February in, in 1961, did you hear of Lee Oswald at that time, or did you know anyone that knew him? No, I had, not in fact, uh, until the assassination, I had no idea he'd ever been in New Orleans. Uh, he'd been there um, that summer of 63, a few years later when I'd been out to California and there'd been an overlap of a couple of weeks. We'd both been there together. Um, District Attorney Jim Garrison has always been convinced that Oswald and I met with one another in New Orleans. But uh, that's a hypothesis very wide of the actual facts. Mm -hmm. Okay, Carrie, I'd like to talk a little bit about your experiences with Garrison in just a minute, but before we get to that, I want to uh, kind of delve into your memory a little bit and get some more impressions, uh, some more of your impressions of Lee Oswald, uh, particularly um, your why you were suspicious that Oswald's announced uh, intention to defect was not what it really was. Uh, I didn't become suspicious until many years later when I began reading the material about Oswald in, uh, uh, in the writings of the Warren Report critics. And uh, I became, I've become convinced since then that he was, a, he was military intelligence and that he was probably uh, working for the CIA when he uh, went to Russia. Uh, I think Carl Oglesby perhaps makes the most interesting uh, and compelling case for that. Uh, also, Anthony Summers and Conspiracy makes a very good case for the same thing. 